fourth Sunday of Advent to welcome back our seminarian Erica and her family, Tom and Henry. Maybe we could give them a little applause just yeah. to say hello. And, um, of course, also to continue to prepare for the coming of our Savior. <clears throat> Blessed are you, holy and living one. You come to your people and set them free. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Holy God, holy and mighty Holy Immortal One, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray together. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Show the light of your countenance, 
and we shall be saved. Let, Let your, your hand be upon the man with the Lord right hand. And the Son of Man, you have made so strong yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. <clears throat> Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. As Erica begins this reading, a brief note, this entire passage is one sentence in the Greek. It was a way that the Romans wrote to one another, and when they started their letter, they made a long sentence which showed how good they were at Greek and prepared people's minds for what they were about to hear. For that reason, it is especially difficult to read. We brought a seminarian this morning in <laughs> to give it her best shot. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. Joseph took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the Lord Christ. Lord, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in their midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. Amen. Amen. Good morning! It is so good to be with you guys here today. 
When Father Phil asked if I had any interest in sharing this morning, I was equally thrilled and terrified. Seminary has a way of sorting through all of your thoughts and beliefs and making your insides feel like they're on the outside. But Father Phil encouraged me to just share about my time at Virginia Theological Seminary and where I have seen God at work. Also, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to share our experiences with a church who supports us and loves us so well. Few other seminarians at other churches in other dioceses have such wonderful and such wonderful invitations. So it's with great honor that I stand here today. As I contemplated what to share, I realized that this new season of life for us, defined by me beginning seminary, is not so different from our gospel story today. Joseph is in a major transition of life. He is engaged to the expectant Mary. As is often the case, I can see our story reflected in the story of Joseph in three ways. One, the way that Joseph showed up. The way that Joseph engaged in the daily routine. And then third, the way that he cultivated the community. First, Joseph showed up. He had a willingness to follow God, and he entered a new season of life that he felt ill-equipped for. Does anyone ever feel equipped to become a parent? I would assume Joseph felt even less equipped, being the earthly father of Jesus, the long-awaited Emmanuel, God with us. And yet, he still showed up and followed where God led. On any given day, I feel like a giant, mushy brain where a swirl of Greek words, early church history, and random theories about the gospel bounce around my head. Most of the time, these thoughts make no sense at all, and I'm left wondering if it will ever get any easier. There are so many things to know. And I have doubts that my brain is absorbing any of it. <clears throat> and then, I read a book where two theologians are discussing the historical Jesus, and suddenly, I know what they're saying when they reference the theme in the Gospel of Mark, or nod at the differences in the birth narratives in the Gospels. No one must explain it to me. Somehow, amid feeling clueless and mentally mushy, by the grace of God, my brain actually has learned something. It is required of me, like it did Joseph, to keep moving forward, even when the way forward is not clear or is counterintuitive. Second, following God meant Joseph had to engage in the daily routine of life. Joseph marries Mary. And then what? I imagine he woke up the next day and he fed the donkey and the other livestock. He looked at the carpenter orders that needed to be worked on and he went to work. He ate lunch and dinner, talked with friends, and then went to bed. Then he got up and he did it all again the next day. And the next and the next, for the next nine months, until Mary gave birth. With a new baby, the routine would change, but it was a routine, and it did require Joseph to get up day after day and engage in it. Virginia Theological Seminary is known for its routine, too. It's an element they particularly pride themselves in. The routine of chapel, coffee, class, lunch. Every day looks the same for me. 815 chapel, where there's either a student-led morning prayer or a full Eucharist service. Then there is always free coffee available in the Flamingo. The Flamingo is an on-campus coffee shop on the ground level of the educational building. 
It's a place to talk to professors, staff, and other students to find out about their weekend, the upcoming papers that are due in your class or others. Occasionally, you can walk in and join a spontaneous theological debate. By 9.30 a.m., most everyone is in class or doing homework for their next class. This past semester, I took Greek, part one of New Testament, historical witness, learning to research and write theologically, and then introduction to liturgy, music, and proclamation. After class, all seminarians, professors, staff, are invited to gather in the refectory to have lunch together. It's the Eucharist meal in action. With an amazing smorgasbord of culinary options to meet most of the dietary restrictions, we eat together. There are conversations about events coming up and about ideas we just learned about in class. All of us trying to grapple with what faith looks like in our own context and how our beliefs affect that. There are ideological challenges, along with joking and teasing and encouragement. Lots of encouragement. And then we separate for more class, or to dig into the mountain of reading and paper writing. Every day looks the same. There is nothing particularly exciting that stands out, and yet, this is how God works for all of us. In the mundane, in the everyday, and the routine. God is there forming us as we follow where God leads. We cannot fail to engage in the daily routine of life. Lastly, community is everything. Joseph was going to do the righteous thing and dismiss Mary quietly. But instead, by marrying Mary, Joseph kept her part of the community. He offered her fellowship with his immediate family, but also continuing to be part of the greater Jewish community. And this was no small thing. Likewise, the community at seminary is everything. Most everyone has left a great deal back home to attend school and get the formation that they need to fulfill their call. Some have left children, spouses, friends, parents, and loving churches, churches. And while all those relationships still exist, they're all at a distance that doesn't allow for the same daily support. The community we're building at Virginia Theological has an understanding that we are all we have. And God provides for each one of us when we show up for each other. So Tom is always at the kids' bus stop as a constant caretaker alongside other parents who rotate to make sure all the kids are safe when some parents have classes, meetings, or work and can't be there. <clears throat> Weekly, Tom also watches another seminarian's child while her single dad has choir practice. I offer my hair clipping skills for a few fellow seminarians as well as serve on the Student Aid Society and created our incoming classes birthday committee. The birthday committee makes sure every classmate is recognized on their birthday with a special dessert of their choosing for the unique gifts of themselves that they bring to our community. <clears throat> Tom is an instrumental part of making sure those birthday desserts are made from doing the ingredient shopping, or delivery of desserts to the refectory, or just completely making them all together when my plate is too full. The Student Aid Society is a group of students who financially helps other students experiencing emergencies or hardships. We manage a small discretionary fund and fundraise so that we can bridge the gap when others are in times of need. The same sense of community is reflected with the kids on campus that Henry plays with. There are about 10 right now, and they call themselves the Wolves. 
Every day, they play together, and you can occasionally hear them howling as they round each other up. The wolves climb trees and play in one courtyard or another, on the playground, in the forest, or in each other's apartments. Just this last week, the kids were planning for the new incoming students next fall. The kids whose parents were graduating and leaving at the end of this school year were giving instructions to the kids who were staying about how to greet the brand new kids that would be right. This community life is holy work. In the conversations between classes, at lunch and the bus stop, it doesn't look particularly different than any other day. And sometimes it feels like I'm not getting anywhere at all, but I just keep showing up. In many ways, it isn't really different than the community that's right here on Grosseal or at St. James. The only real difference is the setting, which creates a contrast of colors that makes it a little easier to see. But the daily work that you do here, showing up and sharing your lives with one another, listening, partaking in ministries together, like teaching Sunday school, helping with rummage shells and greens markets, polishing silver, or coming to Wednesday service and listening to one another. It's supporting each other in the everyday moments with a text, an encouraging word, or even a challenging hard word spoken in love with respect. And you support us all the way in Virginia with your prayers and good thoughts, cards and financial gifts, which makes all the work and studying that I do possible. It also helps with vestments like these that I'm wearing today. All this community life is the same holy work that we're doing at seminary. It matters. On this last Sunday in Advent, as we wait with Joseph just a little longer for the birth of Christ on Christmas morning, we are challenged to show up, to engage in the daily routines, and cultivate our communities. When we do this, we prepare a place in our hearts for Christ to be born anew. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Standing, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge us living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayer 
prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also, so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, and especially those we now name. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of James and all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me. All ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
As you're ready, you may be seated. Following the service, Erica and Tom and um, our Chief Wolf will be at um, coffee hour. I invite you to stick around even for a moment to, um, to greet them and to hear more stories. Also, Erica will be the one shaking hands in the back, so even if you have to run out, you'll get a moment with her. Um, a couple of announcements. Um, today is the last Sunday if you want to dedicate Christmas flowers or music um, in memory of someone or in Thanksgiving, so take a look at that insert if you would. Um, Christmas, I just want to highlight for you on Christmas Eve, which is Saturday, we have a service at 4 o'clock in the main church. That's our pageant service. It's mostly the readings and the sermon are all wrapped up in our Christmas pageant, and it's amazing. At 10.30 in the main church on Saturday, we'll have our evening, our midnight mass, which used to be midnight, then it was 11, and now it's 10.30. Is it? Yeah, I didn't I say 10.30? Yeah, so the service starts at 10.30, and um, there are, is a half hour of Christmas caroling that um, starts at 10. So if you'd like to come at 10, you can, is that, that, that right? Yeah, right. Um, if you'd like to come and join the carols, come at 10 or come at 10.30 for the midnight mass, which will end just a little before midnight. So we'll get you home by midnight for your mass. Um, on Christmas Day, it's a Sunday, so I want you to hear this very clearly, that next Sunday there is no 8 o'clock service. On Christmas Day, we have one service here in the chapel at 10 o'clock. So come at Christmas Eve or come uh, at 10. A week after Christmas is New Year's Day. On New Year's Day, we will have an 8 o'clock service and a 10 o'clock service as usual. So uh, come as you will. Two, um, one last announcement, two last announcements. One is this afternoon at um, three o'clock in the main church, the um, Island Woodwinds are going to be playing music from the Nutcracker. And they are very good. They are very, very good. They're the ones who come at Christmas Eve for us at the 1030 service. So if you come um, today at three o'clock, you will get a beautiful, enjoyable Christmas concert. The last thing I wanted to say is we are closing on putting together our um, photo directory. If you did not get your photo taken officially in September or October, please send us in the office a photograph of your household. No hats, um, ideally no hats and sunglasses if you can uh, find a good picture that actually lets us see your faces. And we'll be, our goal is to have those by annual meeting or immediately. Lots of announcements, it's a busy time. Are there any other announcements this morning? Pat would like to say a word to us, yes. Well, this is the time that I want you to consider reading the Bible in a year. And um, it's usually the first Sunday of the year, but if you have the time, read it Continue at the Lord's table, or as we like to call it, the flamingo. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord. Thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant 
that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounded duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us be the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people. God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
We most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.